I am going to be talking about Darkcoin today. And Darkcoin is a currency that started out in early 2014, in January. And it started out as an idea that maybe we could make a currency that was more innovative than the other ones that were, that were being released. Um, if probably everyone remembers that early in 2014, late in 2013, everyone was releasing all of these currencies that were just tweaking the variables a little bit. So the idea here was to actually make something that had an improvement over Bitcoin, but that was done in a close enough way to Bitcoin that people could switch over easily and either use both or switch to Darkcoin for certain things that made sense for them to do. Um, so the three things that Darkcoin supports that are better than Bitcoin are fungibility, which allows a person to mix coins and then they're the same as all of the other coins on the network. And this is done through the core protocol of the Darkcoin network. So this is like a core feature. The idea here is to take the coins and to constantly be mixing them up. So all coins are the same as everything else. Um, the second thing that the Darkcoin network supports is called the Masternode network. Now, on the Bitcoin network, they have full nodes. And what we call a full node is a person that has a server, they're running the daemon, they're running it 24-7, and they um, have the ports open, and they have a high number of max connections. So they can take on, you know, 150 peers. And when they receive a block, they send it to all those people, they propagate messages, and they'll help people sync when people come online that are, that are like a week or two out of date or, you know, things like that. Um, the problem is that the Bitcoin network has always had trouble keeping full nodes. So what we've done is come up with a concept where a person that is an investor, they might have some Darkcoin. Well, they could run one of these full nodes in what we call the master node mode. And this, this actually allows them to earn interest on that money while proving that they're running a full node. So we have a thousand of these full nodes already. And that number is growing all the time and we're trying to get more. Um, we can actually tweak these variables to either increase the full nodes or decrease them if we want. And we should end up with, you know, thousands of these eventually. Uh, these actually provide other services too, such as the mixing on the network. So this is an ecosystem that we've created here. And this is to improve upon some of the features that Bitcoin's lacking. Um, one of the other features that Bitcoin's lacking is something due to the way that confirmations are handled. Now, most people that sell merchandise online would like you to wait three to six confirmations on the Bitcoin network before they are assured that the money is actually real that they're receiving. Um, this is, you know, 30 to 60 minutes of time. That's a lot of time. So what Instant X does is it utilizes random members of the Masternode network for each transaction, and they actually confirm that a transaction is valid. They act as observers on the network. After they observe that a transaction has come through, they will all talk to each other, and then what they do what's called a consensus lock. And we'll talk about that more later. That allows the network to have confirmations within 20 to 30 seconds. Okay, so let's go back to the beginning. What is Darksend? Well, Darksend is our anonymity software. It's built directly into the core of the client so that anyone can use it on the network. And since anyone can use it on the network, there's a lot of usage, which means the, the mixing is a very high quality and it's relatively fast. So here's our first slide. This is what a Darksend transaction looks like for the first session. Basically, you see that people are putting in money on the left side and they're taking out money on the right side. 
This uses a function of the, of the Bitcoin protocol where you don't actually have to send a transaction from one person to one person. And all you really need to do is merge a bunch of transactions together from multiple people. Um, but the problem is that, let's say, three people put in money and three people took out the exact same amount. You could follow it through the transaction by the amounts. So what we're doing here is, on the right side, you can see that there's tens, one hundreds, and ones. Um, those are called denominations. So every person can put in any amount, and then they have to take out those denominations. So each person's taking out one hundreds, each person's taking out tens, each person's taking out ones. So you can't tell which one hundred went where, right? It's like three red cars going under a bridge and nine red cars coming out. You can't tell which the three were. So it's anonymity by uncertainty, really. Um, the next thing that happens in the next slide here, I'm going to show how you can see the mapping between the inputs and the outputs. Now, the red maps to the red, so you can see that it's pretty easy to tell who on the left side actually put in the money, but then on the right side, you can see where they took it out. So it's pretty hard to follow unless you actually know where the money went, right? Um, okay, now this slide here, this is the second session. So the first session was where you got your money into den denominations. The second session is where you take your denominations that you just got, and then you run them through a different master node. Now, the first master node knew who you were and then knew who that original money is. The second master node doesn't know about the first one. It just knows about the money that you're putting in now, and it knows where it came out. So you put in denominations, you take out denominations, and then you could do this for three, four, five, six sessions. Um, and then no master node, not a single one of them, can follow it through the whole thing. We're using a random master node per session. So one of the reasons why we require a thousand dark coin is so that you can't control too much of this network. If you could control like say 50% of the network, you could actually tell and map these transactions through it. So this actually limits the control without having to buy enormous amounts of dark coin. Um, okay, so the next thing is we're going to show an anonymous transaction. This is after all of those sessions have ended. And you take the, the denominations that you got out, you put them all together, and then you send your, your amount that you're paying for something. And this example is somebody that's building a master node. So they took a bunch of anonymous money and they put it into a thousand dark point input, which is what the system can read as a master node. So now you should have a relatively decent understanding of how dark send works. And you can reach out to this at any time on the network and anonymize money. And it's completely trustless and decentralized. It's decentralized since no one controls it and it's on you know, a thousand nodes at any given time. And it's trustless because you're only sending money to yourself. And you only sign the transactions that are the same ones that you made. You essentially make one transaction and then there's two other people. They made one each. And then you sign what is yours of it. And then no one, if there's like any missing signatures in there, it can't work. So no one can actually steal your money from that. Uh, the next slide is the master node network. So this is kind of what it looks like. You have master nodes just mixed in with regular network, and then they're connected and just propagating messages around. And then you can you have a list of them in the client, and your client can use them at any time for anything it wants. And here's what it looks like when a user goes through multiple sessions. So they hit up that first master node over there for session one, and then it went through session two, and then three. And then later on, after the coins were completely anonymous, it made an anonymous transaction. Now, why, why do we have requirements for master nodes? 
Well, as I was saying earlier, you don't want anyone to control too much of the network. And this, this attack, if you control too much of the network, gives you way too much power over, over the network, especially when you're doing things that, like uh, anonymizing coins. Uh, Tor has a similar issue. Uh, they actually have no requirements for running nodes. So if you ran a whole bunch of nodes, you could isolate some of the, the traffic that was going through the network. There's been a lot of research that's come out about this, this type of attack. <clears throat> what the Tor network could do is implement something similar to what I've created, where they have their own cryptocurrency, and then they all run equivalent to master nodes on the network and they would get paid part of the block. So it would actually incentivize people to run these nodes, and it would uh, fix the, the type of attack where you're controlling too much of the network. So there's, there's a lot of applications for this, this type of technology, and uh, I'm pretty excited about it. I think it, it fixes some of the, the core problems with Bitcoin. Um, okay, so the third thing that I wanted to talk about was Instanex. So you have a bunch of master nodes that are on the network. And in Instant X, you broadcast a message saying, I request a transaction lock on this specific transaction. And what happens is it goes out and it hits 10 master nodes. And there's a deterministic algorithm that's ran. And that all of the, all the master nodes know which 10 of them are supposed to sign for that specific transaction. So now, the 10 of those master nodes, they look through and make sure that it got into the memory pool correctly, and that there's been no shenanigans going on in the network. And they act as observers. So they, they observe. If you tried to do a double spend during this, one of them would see it. And then when they form a transaction lock, they all sign and they put it into one bulk message, and then they publish this transaction lock. Now, that transaction lock then goes out on the network, and it can undo any conflicting transactions, and it will lock in place those inputs so that nobody can come out with a transaction that pays, say, for example, higher fee at the same time and try to undo that transaction. This makes it so that the miners will mine that transaction because it's in everybody's pool, memory pool. And afterwards, it gets into the blockchain. You know, it's, it's an assured thing at that point. So it's, it's a creative use of the master node network to really get around the issue of having to wait 30 to 60 minutes for, you know, an hour of the network's time. This also allows us to do point-of-sale type applications where a person would be you know, buying something from a storefront and they could use Darkcoin. And Darkcoin at this point hopefully would be able to clear these transactions within 10 seconds, which is a pretty amazing accomplishment for a cryptocurrency. And whoever is you know, operating that store is assured that that money will still be valid because they did get a transaction lock from the Masternode network. Uh, so you can see like how having these specialized nodes and using them in a decentralized way like this can actually benefit a cryptocurrency greatly. So this is kind of what we're pretty excited about and we're excited about the technology that we've made and what we've been able to accomplish with it. And, I hope you found all of this information useful. Um, I'll be around if anyone has any questions afterward. Thanks.